Who's in behind? You got, you got second make a rapid. Man. Yeah, but they don't run in behind. They come to feet. Foden's no, the only one who I've actually behind. seen make a forward run. They can Mate, run Saka plays touchline winger. Aaron Lennon. Peak Aaron yeah, Lennon. Yeah, that's not how he's going to play for my team. Yeah, Saka, you can't teach an old dog new tricks. Yes, you can't, mate. He's fucking 18 or whatever, 19. Bakayo Saka, Google it. 18 years old. This is awful. Finn's got some blinded England love. Telling me that Phil Foden's going to lead us to Euro glory. Got benched after the second game last year. Shocking knowledge. I don't think Foden should have got benched. He he wasn't if, his goal, if his shot had gone in. But his first shot in the whole tournament. Yeah, hit the post. <laughs> if that had gone in, we'd have won it. It'd have been a different story. Yes guys, hello, welcome back to another video. So today is Push. We're down at Premier Gym in Colville. You'll have seen this gym before, we've trained here loads of times. It's been on YouTube loads of times. So like I said in the last video, I'm just basically carrying over from the last video, sort of what my last session was to now obviously what the next session is. So today is a Monday, which means it's Push and Arms. We started off with a single arm cuffed cable lateral. Um, so basically we do four sets there. It's not a very demanding exercise. Sorry mate, it's not a very demanding exercise. So we do four sets, get a lot of blood volume into the, the side delt, get a good stimulus there at the start of the session, get the side delt nice and warm. Obviously, you know, I've spoke about these kind of things numerous times, we want to get the shoulder girdle warm. I wouldn't really want to come straight into the gym and jump straight onto this. I wouldn't feel physically warm, I wouldn't feel mentally warm. So um, not only do we do that to get the shoulder warm and to prioritise the side delts, but also just from a psychological standpoint, getting a little bit warmer, getting sort of ready to go into the bigger compound movement so we've got the the hammer strength incline first. Uh, always do the steps, as you'll have seen. We always do 10 minutes of steps, and then obviously I do my stretches, my, uh, my boring stretches. So yeah, we've got this today. We've got Reese doing, uh, what are you doing, seven plates today? Seven plates? No chance. Seven Real plates with, with this range, and then he, he gets slated for it on, uh, on Instagram. Anyway, enjoy the video, guys. Like and subscribe. Oh, there's, there's an old guy in here as well, bless him, that's got the same T-shirt on as Reese. so that was funny. Pete, yeah. I'm sure people have got little yeah, tips Pete, that. Pete was videoing more than us. We were both like, Pete, come on, we're paying you. Hello, I like money. Here we go. Come on. Yeah, there we go. Yep. Yes. Good. Solid bank. Easy. Yep. Good. There we go. There we go. Come on. Should be your rep. Should be your rep. Should be yours. Come on. Come on, Finn. Yes. Yeah, that's you, that's you. Yeah, yeah, lovely. Good. Fancy the slight pause after the eccentric initially on the fifth. Huh? You went for the, you know the fifth on the eccentric? You almost like got yeah, to the top. Yeah, I was going to go straight into it and then I paused it slightly. Yeah. Mid, mid rep pause, like just... No, I just thought I'd pause it in the mid-range for... Yeah, 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 Just trying to rinse the mid-range. Oh, okay. Because <laughs> this taxes the shortest. It taxes the short, so yeah, if so you want to get a bit more out of the mid, you just pause it there. Yeah, it makes sense. No, it was one of those where it was like, it I felt like mean, it was moving yeah. well, but... And you get to the top and you're like, okay, go again. And yeah, you're like, oh, but I, was just, I just thought I was a bit smarter. I think it was the right decision. Yeah. That was plus two. Here we go.
Easy. Go. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Yeah. Good, mate. Yes. Come on. Yeah. Come on. Yes. Good. Come on. Two. Two reps. Drive. Yes. Good. Good. One. One. Come on. Double digits. What we said. Come on. Yes. Come on, Ben. Yeah, a little bit. Just that right side, giving in. Failure, mate. Absolute failure. Yeah, that fat guy in the comments saying I'm a fat failure. That's me. You're not fat, but you're a failure. My right side, it's like. Yeah, it just gives in a little bit every time. Yes, guys, so just done the, uh, the hammer strength incline. So you'll see both me and Reese sort of create a little bit more spinal extension by like sliding forward slightly. The reason for that is that our it's egos. quite, uh, it's, first of all, our egos. Yeah. Second of all, it's, it's a harsh incline. And, and third, like any press that we were doing, obviously, especially a, a chest focus press like that is, you want to be in a, a decent degree of spinal extension. You don't want your spine to be neutral. You want to be extended like this, yeah, or like this. Yeah, what that's going to do is it's going to help you keep your scapula retracted and it's going to help you keep your rib cage like up and out. And the pecs basically sort of flare around the rib cage. So we don't want to be flat like this and pressing. We want to be here, like chest nice and high in that sort of spinal extended position. So that's why we'll slide the hips forward a little bit. We maybe, we maybe do slide them forward a little bit too much for our ego. Um, but to be fair, for me, I find that it, I don't really find it very comfortable, even on the warm-up sets, even with one or two plates, like I don't find it very comfortable when I'm here. I find it the most comfortable when I slide forward pretty much right to the edge of the seat and then I can get myself in as much sort of spinal extension as possible. So again, that's one of those things where like it might look as though, well, why are you doing it like that? Why would you have your hips forward? But what feels best for you as an individual is what's most important. And for me on that machine, if I do even again, one or two plates on the warm-ups and I'm sat like this, that's going to feel horrendous. And I'm also not really going to be getting much out of my chest, especially in the lengthened position, because my pecs aren't going to be lengthening if my rib cage is caved in. So uh, yeah, any chest press you do, don't, you don't necessarily need to shift your hips forward a lot, but make sure you're getting into spinal extension, getting your rib cage up and out. We're on to the high incline Smith next. So more of a shoulder dominant movement. We'll still have some obviously chest, upper chest, especially involved on this, but this is going to be our shoulder dominant compound. That was our chest dominant compound. Yep. Three. Yes. Two. Yep. Up. Yep. Yep. Solid. Good, mate. Move well. Good. Flying. Easy. Good. Yes, good fin. Come on. Yep, come on. Good. Over to go, over to go. Come on, come on. Your rep shouldn't be failing this. Come on. Yes, yeah, lovely, good. Move on. Yep, okay, come on. Here we go, here we go, come on. Stay with me, stay with me. Come on. Yes, yeah, good, good. Stay on that fin. Yeah, lovely, mate. <laughs> Oh. oh, is that the, the Sonia oh. Coleman? Oh, oh. Sonia Coleman. Sonia Coleman. Happy with that. I wrote eight down, and that was eight and a forced. I thought I'd take that force. I know I wasn't going to get it. So when it's like that, just like yeah. give me a decent amount. Just oh, mate, I, I gave you a hell of a lot. <laughs> yeah, I know, but you still let me stick a little bit. Mate, I tried to give you as much as I could. I was like, please, mate, give me some more. Three. Yep. Two. Yes. One. Yep. Come on. Up. Easy. Good. Lovely, mate. Solid. Easy. Mm. 
Good. Yes, good mate, come on. Drive. Yes, mm. good. Come on, and again, and again, and again. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on, Finn. Your rep. Yeah. Mm. Sorry. Sorry. Right. 11 and 1. Solomon. Whole plate down, and then and a 2.5 for the same rep. Right? Yeah, but I'm not a big cheat. No, no, but I use, I'm always a plate ahead of you. I actually sleep and I actually do everything right. Yeah. Gear. You've been ill for the past two weeks, <laughs> but you're still progressing. <laughs> you see my bloods. <laughs> it's probably not even a joke. <laughs> Stay natural, guys. Bad for you. Stand loads are bad for you. It's my uh, midget step. Good mate. Yep, come on. <coughs> so guys, dips as the, the third compound. So that's my like tricep dominant movement or the tricep dominant compound. But that being said, like I get a lot of chest and front delt out of that as well. I've got uh, two sets, so I've still got the second set to do. The second set I just do as body weight and I pause in the lengthened range. So basically, I was doing a one second pause. I got that up to like a 30 repper. Then I was doing a two second pause or a two count pause. Got that up to like a 30 repper. Uh, and now I'm doing a three count on the pause. So I think I got 14 last week. Just trying to take over the video. So I think I got 14 last week. So I'll keep it as a three second pause, keep running that up. Um, and generally it feels pretty good. It feels really light after doing a loaded set. Um, but also with the dip in terms of the profile of the movement, generally it's, it's hard in this lengthened range as we press up, as we approach full extension, the moment arm's gonna get shorter. Um, so basically it gets easier towards the top and it's a latter press. So we wanna make it a bit harder in the lengthened range. The first press, which is the hammer strength incline, which is behind Pete, that is really hard in the short. So that's why we do that first, because our ability to get a muscle short earlier in the session is, is greater. Then we do the, the high incline Smith, where generally the profile on that is, it's not like any part of the Smith is easier or lighter, um, but generally with that kind of movement, you'll probably be able to see actually, in terms of where we're failing, generally we're failing sort of here. So mid to lengthened range, which is good for a, a second press. Again, because as we approach extension, it gets easier. And then the same on the dips. And that's why the second set is with a pause and a lengthened. Now I've got a spot Reese again. It's good, come on then.
Oh. So basically what I do there is literally just one set of more of like a costal fly, which was that second one, and one set of a clavicular fly. I keep my elbows really tight on a fly. You could argue it's basically a press. It's like a neutral grip press, but you can find that when my elbows flare more on a fly, it just feels awkward on my shoulder. And again, like I spoke about earlier, how the pecs sort of basically originate and insert, it makes sense to actually keep those elbows that little bit tighter. So like here, for example, I can feel more of a stretch through my pecs than I can up here. Yeah, here I'm, my pecs aren't in the best sort of position. There's not that much leverage on the pec, whereas here there's a lot more. So I keep those elbows nice and tight. Um, I literally do those just for a little bit of extra volume as well. Like this is my only push session across the week. I do have two sets of a mid inclined Smith on Wednesday, but otherwise I don't have any push movement. So it's just for a little bit extra volume. Otherwise my sort of chest and delt pressing volume is pretty low. Um, and yeah, it's just got arms and a bit more side delts to finish off. So, this is called a Bayesian curl, and it would make more sense for me to use the back pad because then I can lock against it and I've got more stability. But I don't like it, it doesn't feel good. So, uh, as much as it might make more sense, and a lot of the time with our training, we'll overanalyze things and think, well, what makes the most sense? What provides the most stability? What is going to give us the best resistance profile? We can think of all these things, but often we overlook like what actually feels good for you. And for me, it doesn't feel great with the back pad. I feel like it restricts my scapula a little bit. I feel like I end up relying on going a little bit heavier because I've got more stability, which then in turn leads to worse form. So yeah, first of all, your main sort of point of call to focus on when you're assessing an exercise is how does it actually feel for you? What kind of connection and stimulus do you feel like you're getting through that muscle and then assess everything else? One thing as well that I've spoke with a few clients about recently is on your isolation movements, like people can obsess about the, the numbers and the reps way too much. And uh, obviously we want to be progressing them in the long run. Yeah, we don't want to be doing, when I, when I first step in the gym, I'm not gonna be doing the same on that bicep curl as I am 10 years down the line. But what is more important is how, again, how is it actually feeling? Especially with a lagging body part, a lot of people struggle with growing their arms probably because they're just not really actually connecting with their arms. Yeah, you know, they're throwing the weight around, they're sort of using a lot of shoulder flexion, maybe they're using a little bit of hip extension, a little bit of sort of uh, <laughs> plantar flexion going on to their toes. And basically they're not really actually getting that much out of the bicep or the given muscle in that example. So for a lot of isolation, same with like a leg extension, like anybody can do the stack on a leg extension, but you're just throwing it around, yeah? You're using hip extension to, to move the weight, like so. 
you need to be nailing your execution and how it actually feels first. And it will progress in the long run. But what I do with my isolations now is I actually, I just track the load. I don't track how many reps I'm doing. So I don't have a clue what reps I did on that weight last week. But I know that I did that load and I know that's my heavier set of the three sets. I do a lighter set, I do a heavier set and then I do a moderate set. The first set is to get a lot of blood in the bicep, get nice and warm, get a good contraction, make sure that I'm really getting a good connection before going into a heavier set. But I'm not going into it thinking I have to get nine because I got eight last week because that's when you start to lose that execution, that internal feel. So I just prefer to log the actual load rather than the load and the reps on isolation work. Fucking watch is calling SOS. Start again, yeah, I was in danger, mate. Cables were cutting me up. I was gonna get strangled by the cables. a seated katana extension i don't know whether pete filmed me getting in and out of it but well i saw it, he filmed me get out of it but getting into it as well um, before my uh, my watch tried to ring 999 so basically i got this from hypertrophy coach joe bennett um and uh, it's a movement that i use for quite a few clients now it's, it's a really nice movement you can work through the full range of the triceps once you get used to the setup it's actually pretty easy although it looks like a ball ache um, the cuffs obviously help in terms of you know you don't have to worry about grip I actually have the cuff on my hand rather than on my wrist it feels a bit awkward if it's on your wrist it'll slide down your forearm so I like grab it so I still have it on my wrist my hand sorry then I grab it like that just so it's, I've actually got a bit more control over it but yeah you can work through the full range the profile's really nice it feels really comfortable on my elbows so you don't actually need a Bravo cable as well you can just do it with a normal bench and um, the only thing is the bench can get in the way a little bit but if you set it upright, generally you'll be all right to do it with a normal bench. Even if you sat sort of with a, a normal bench or even with a short bench and you just had your lower back against the bench, the bench on a mid incline, you could do it like that. Or you could have the bench fully upright and have the cables behind the bench if you don't have a, a Bravo set up like this. Oh. 
So basically what I'll do there, sorry mate, what I'll do there is uh, there's a dual arm into single arm. I don't even know what you'd call that because it's not a mechanical drop set because I'm not changing the mechanics. It's almost like a fatigue drop set or rest, rest drop set because the reason that you can extend it is because obviously your the side that you're not curling up on and that, that rep gets a bit of a rest. So when I do my right side, my left side is getting a couple of seconds rest. Yeah, rather than when you're doing dual arm, you're not getting that rest. So you can sort of extend the set a little bit like that. I've been doing that for a while now. I get a decent connection with that. It's more like a brachialis focused exercise. A little bit of forearm as well because I'm having to grip it. I was doing it with the Vulcan attachment, sort of sat on my hands. But I was noticing that I was obviously not having to grip it. So my forearms weren't really getting much stimulus on pretty much any exercise. Um, because I use straps for all my pulling movements and stuff. So that's like one of my movements that I actually have as you know, slightly forearm focused. Even though it's not directly working through sort of wrist flexion, it's still slightly forearm focused. So I've done a uh, triple drop set there using the cables just so that there's more of a challenge in the length and range. Is it pulling me across? If I was doing dumbbells, it's pulling me down with gravity. So here to here is easy, whereas on the cables, here to here is, is still challenging. That's tough, that. That's good. <clears throat> Thank you.
To be fair, oh my god, I've got a right shelf. I'm not even trying. Oh, no, I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, soft. Right, guys, that is a wrap up of the push video. Um, I don't think you were in it that much, were you? No, Pete and video. We, we do train Shame. together, but you do a dumbbell press while I do the dips, and then we do different bits for, for arms yeah. um, and, and we sort of chop and change towards the end. A um, little bit of posing there. You'll have seen me pose in the last video. This is the last video before the deload. So I'm deloading from Wednesday until Sunday. So I'll have five full days off. And then I'm back into training from Monday. First week um, will be a D-volume, or at least the first few sessions, I'll assess how I feel. First few sessions as a minimum will be D-volume. So at least Monday to Wednesday, which pretty much covers all my musculature. So first few sessions, I'll just be easing back in. And then from the back end of the week, I'll likely be straight back to normal volume, unless I still feel a bit uh, off because uh, often post deload you never feel amazing we always say like the first week back you still feel quite stiff you're sort of getting back into the swing of training so if i don't feel 100 percent by wednesday i'll devolume all the way until the end of the week um but yeah that's that i won't go through all the deload i've done videos on deloads and things like that there's posts on my instagram on deloads um i'm sure pete will put my instagram reese's instagram the podcast as always yep. make sure you go and listen to the podcast Watch give the it. podcast a rating we do appreciate everybody who the recent shares one's it on gone the quite well we've got a lot of uh, yeah, yeah. we're getting there. quite a lot of love on the podcast yeah. so yeah if you do watch the podcast either on youtube or listen to it on spotify please do share it on your instagram we do appreciate it um and yeah thank you all for watching please like subscribe comment all of the nice stuff to uh, to make sure I get loads and loads of views. That'd to be boost really nice. the algorithm. Yeah, I need That's to boost the algorithm. Yeah. I've got a video that bo that has boosted 150k views. Go and watch that if you've not watched it already. What, what is it? The one with my penis out. My penis isn't fully out, but no, you'll shame. see what it is uh, if you if you have a look. You'll at see. My, uh, you'll, see. YouTube, you'll see. It. You'll see it. It'll it. hit you. Bang! Right in the face. Um, <laughs> yeah. Thanks, guys. Catch you in the next video. What an outro.